In February 2013, the Auditor General released his report on the conservation of biodiversity in British Columbia. To read the full report, please visit our website at www.bcauditor.com. The following presentation provides a summary of the report. As the nonpartisan independent auditor of the Legislative Assembly, the Auditor General audits the government reporting entity. This consists of ministries, crown corporations, and other government organizations such as universities, colleges, school districts, health authorities, and similar organizations that are controlled by or accountable to the provincial government. The Office of the Auditor General serves the people of British Columbia and their elected representatives by conducting independent audits and advising on how well government is managing its responsibilities and resources. Under the Auditor General Act, the Auditor General conducts and reports on both financial audits and performance or value for money audits. The Act also allows the Auditor General to follow up on any recommendations made in his reports. British Columbia is Canada's most biologically diverse province because of its complex geography and varied climate. However, recent assessments have shown that many of its species and ecosystems are declining and that a number of species are at risk of local extinction. In BC, 94% of the province is crown land. How that land is managed is pivotal in conserving biodiversity. Understanding and managing biodiversity is a difficult and complicated task. The BC government has been involved in initiatives to conserve biodiversity for a long period of time. Since 2006, one of the goals of the Ministry of Environment has been to maintain healthy and diverse native species and ecosystems across BC. The audit purpose was to determine whether the BC government is effectively conserving biodiversity in the province. These questions arise out of one of the goals of the Ministry of Environment, to maintain healthy and diverse native species and ecosystems across BC, and the Ministry objectives related to this goal of well-managed, integrated, open and accessible information on species and ecosystems and conserved, maintained and enhanced native species and ecosystems. Our overall conclusion was that significant gaps exist in government's understanding of biodiversity in BC. Government does not know whether its actions are resulting in the conservation of biodiversity and government is not adequately measuring and reporting on its progress in the conservation of biodiversity. Having adequate inventories of biodiversity is a common problem for most jurisdictions. Nevertheless, government needs a basic amount of good quality information with which to understand the status of biodiversity in the province and make well-informed decisions about its conservation. We expected government to be systematically collecting sufficient and reliable information on biodiversity. What we found is that there are significant gaps in government's information of components of biodiversity and government has not developed a strategy for filling these gaps. Its current approach is dependent on sporadic funding. Quality checks to ensure the information being captured is reliable are sometimes lacking. Within our second finding, we expected government to have a legislative framework that supports the conservation of biodiversity, a method to prioritize the actions needed to conserve biodiversity, accountability for those actions, and assessed and monitored its actions to ensure they are being effective. However, we found a number of barriers to effectiveness. We found that legislation to conserve species and habitat doesn't apply equally to all industries. We also found that the regulation for the Wildlife Act has not been introduced even though the amendment was completed eight years ago. As well, the limits that government has for creating wildlife habitat areas are not based on scientific rationale. Overall, few species at risk are actually protected under the province's legislation. Regarding prioritization, current literature indicates that the job of conserving biodiversity is far greater than the resources available. We expected the BC government to be prioritizing its actions to achieve the best possible biodiversity conservation outcomes for the amount of funding and other resources invested. Government invested significant time and resources into creating the conservation framework, a prioritization tool. However, the tool has not been kept up to date and it has not achieved its goal of informing conservation actions and decisions across the province.
lack of oversight by senior executive was one of the issues identified for its lack of success. As well, while government has created a number of plans for conserving biodiversity, a lack of assigned responsibilities and timelines within these plans makes it unclear how many of the actions are being implemented. It's important to understand why we focused on habitat in this audit. According to studies, habitat destruction is the main reason species become extinct and preventing the degradation of habitats is the most effective way to conserve biodiversity. The Ministry of Environment's State of the Environment report also notes that habitat loss is the greatest threat to species at risk. In 1993, our office undertook an audit to assess the adequacy of the processes that were in place to protect fish and wildlife habitat. One of the key findings included a lack of specific objectives for protecting habitat on a province-wide basis. Twenty years later, this issue has still not been resolved. We specifically looked at the Government Actions Regulation, or GAR, under the Forest and Range Practices Act for two main reasons. First, Government has stated that this regulation is the main tool it has available to conserve species habitat at the local level. However, we note that GAR areas are constraints to industry, not protected areas. Second, the Ministry of Environment has used the number of habitat designations as a performance measure for its objective of conserving native species and ecosystems. Of the five habitat designation tools we examined, only three are being implemented. Most had not identified what habitat was required to conserve the species, and these designations are not being sufficiently monitored. The Forest and Range Evaluation Program is an evaluation program designed to assess the effectiveness of BC's Forest and Range Practices Act and regulations. The objective of the program is to evaluate whether practices under the Forest and Range Practices Act are meeting the intent of the Act's current objectives and to determine whether forest and range practices and the legislation itself are meeting government's broader intent for the sustainability of BC's natural resources. Six years since its inception, there has been very little monitoring of the habitat designations, which means that government cannot determine whether these designations are meeting their objectives. For our third finding, we expected government to be reporting to the public on the status of biodiversity, measuring and reporting publicly on its progress towards conserving biodiversity, and reporting on how it is meeting its national and international commitments. These are important steps for government to demonstrate its progress towards the conservation of biodiversity. However, we found that while government has made a commitment to conserve biodiversity to the people of BC and within Canada and the international community, government is not reporting publicly on how its actions are affecting the status of biodiversity. In 2010, the UN found that governments had failed to reduce biodiversity loss and declared 2011 to 2020 the decade on biodiversity. BC has an opportunity to be an international leader and bolster its reputation on the world stage by ensuring that by 2020 it has reversed the current decline in the province's biodiversity. We made six recommendations for government in our report. Specifically, we recommend that the ministry make a long-term commitment to collect sufficient and reliable information about the status of biodiversity in BC and apply this information to make informed decisions about the conservation of biodiversity. Review its legislative framework to ensure that any significant gaps, inconsistencies, or barriers to achieving conservation of biodiversity are identified and addressed. Assign responsibilities and timelines for its conservation actions and demonstrate how the prioritization of these actions is conserving biodiversity. Establish goals, objectives, targets, and timelines to fully implement its habitat designation tools and determine whether other tools are necessary to achieve its objective of conserving biodiversity. Complete sufficient monitoring to assess the effectiveness of its actions in the conservation of biodiversity and report periodically to the Legislative Assembly and the public on how its actions are impacting the status of biodiversity and how it is meeting its provincial, national and international commitments to biodiversity. That concludes our summary of this report. To read this report and our other publications, or for more information about our office, please visit our website at www.bcauditor.com.
The Office of the Auditor General encourages your feedback on this report as well as your suggestions for further audits. We look forward to hearing from you.